And welcome to the Capital Improvement Plan Committee of January 30th. We're going to open the meeting here. It is 5.05 p.m. So the meeting is open. First thing we're going to do is review minutes of our last meeting, and we'll vote those. I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Just Good. thank you to Jack. Yes. So we had a uh, motion and a seconded. All in favor of voting the minutes? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? So we're 5-0-0. Zero, zero. So we have quite a bit to do tonight. Uh, the first thing we're going to run down through with the FY requests. I just want to make note, Jack, thank you very much, by the way, on the minutes. Yeah. A nice job. Sure. Well done. As usual. And I just want to, uh, there's a worksheet that was handed out for all the FY 2021 capital projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, on this worksheet, I'd like to thank John. Uh, him and I were kind of on the same page. I was going to do up a list, and he just mentioned, hey, why don't I just plug in all the new requests on the uh, FY 2021 five-year plan, and so that's what he did, and it's going to work out quite well, I believe. Also, uh, approximately around 5.30, as we get through this, uh, we're hoping that Julie will be able to come in and give us a brief update on the building assessments and where they're at and the whole process there. So I think what we're going to do is start right at the top of this FY21 capital projects plan and run right down through. Uh, there'll be items that I cross-reference to our five-year plan that we can discuss if we have time. So let's just take right from the top. We have a town office file server, which was projected and expected for a request. And Diana, maybe you can address that because we did not see any paperwork on that. And I don't know if there's a, we don't know if there's a need for the town office file server or if that's being done already with some other funding, we're not sure. So the, I guess the question comes down to, do we simply take this off from our? So um, I guess it, it, you are going to, you have two servers, you have an actual domain server and then you have a virtual uh, server that's running um, and we, uh, don't need to upgrade them either one of those in 21 but your virtual server you will need it expires in 23 in the the support for that so you will need to upgrade that at some point um, the so uh, do you want us to current, kick that into like an FY I think if you put it into 23 23 FY sense. 23 on the five-year plan so we know it's coming but yes. there, there's no and money would, request at this point correct because wait wait, wait a did, second is it is it um it expires July 1st of 23 I think I I don't know the exact time it is support it's like the same kind of thing like the window support expires I think it's October I think we need to put it in in FY 22 maybe in 22, FY 22 I think that probably and makes if sense we don't need it we can always bump it into uh, if FY it's truly 23, 23 it's fine but yeah. I, I I'm uncomfortable putting it at 20 okay so yeah. we'll make note on that that we'll kick that twenty thousand dollar request into FY 22 <laughs> on the five-year plan because we did, and just so you know, we did, um, th the reason that you didn't use this money is because you had a grant, you had a municipal IT grant that you had got in a couple years ago for a different purpose that wasn't able to be achieved. So we used it to upgrade the network, ser the domain server and um, institute the cybersecurity um, and it, all the requirements that were for cybersecurity this past year. Right. Um, and um, we used the grant money. There was $47,000 in grant money. So we used that to do that. We did penetration that's testing. That's what we did instead of buying the hardware, John. 
Yeah. Um, you were, you know, you saw that article. Mm -hmm. Ours was for um, That's the, right. yeah. the server and, and yeah. We basically security. did the exact same thing. We had that exact same grant. We just did mm -hmm. it two years ago. And so we just finished doing all that work this last year. So now we have a managed outsourced IT system that has a, you know, has a comprehensive firewall and an antivirus and it's monitored. We have archiving, we have backup that's um, kept off site. Um, and all of that is, um, you know, been done okay. with the state. We went through the mass office of, oh, now it's something different, but it was office of IT. Right. The last piece that needs to be done for that is just putting in some IT policies. Okay. And we also have a grant for, from Homeland Security, but we've done some of the work, so. Correct. It's going right. to be, it's not on here, in other words, because we do have money for stuff. That's right. right. Yeah, I guess I guess the, the question right. comes back to uh, you know the the wording in the bylaw though, you know should that stuff be on here? Yes. Even right, though exactly, yeah. you know even though it's grant money. Yes. It, sh so, it should be reflected in our five-year plan. In the future, we need to yes. make sure we try to do that. And, and you so. know what, Jeff, it's it's 100% my fault because I'm the one that we converted that grant to, it was, it's a community compact grant. Mm -hmm. com, com, we had, we were struggling to spend it. Right. So we got permission to spend it the way we wanted. Mm -hmm. And it was such an arduous process. By the time we got done, it just, I'm yeah. sorry. No, nope. nope. We weren't going through this. It was like last summer. Right. And then also the Homeland Security thing, the reason why it hasn't come through here yet is because we don't know how we're gonna spend that money because we spent this money a certain way. So as soon as, Oh, I figure we figure this out. The problem is you're also talking to somebody that has, is technology challenged. Right. So I, I hustled the money, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'm depending upon other people to tell me how to spend right. it. Yeah. Well, just, I would say just bring that forward as soon as possible. That's I will. All. So we that way have, we can be right. all inclusive on, so people know. And I know it's very difficult because this five-year plan is going to grow. But I, I think we need to mm -hmm. at least have it reflected in the plan. Do you know? So do you know how much? How, do you know how much our share of that Homeland Security grant is? No. So right now, the Homeland Security Council provided an additional grant for a regional exploration for the towns to work on additional cybersecurity measures. There's no cost to us at this point. Once they put the regional program together, if we want to be involved in it, then it might be a cost to you. But I understand that might replace what we're putting in for our IT, like our outsourced. No, it's supposed to for us IT. because I, I'm John and I are both on the council, so mm -hmm. we and uh, modified the grant so we could do additional beyond. Right. So it, it's not holding us back because right. we were the original. Yeah. Uh, no, I, that's well, exactly right. You, you can take When you figure that saying. out, yes. that's yeah. for another discussion it's because we're going to be tight on time here. I don't, know, I don't here. know what it is. Right. right. But exactly when you figure that out, saying. just bring right. it forward so we can right. have it all inclusive. But the, I just wanted you to uh, know it's not the, Diana's fault. Right. It's my fault. No, there's no finger pointing here. Let's just try to get it onto the plan here. The town hall roof, I'm assuming, was at the police mm -hmm. station roof. Mm -hmm. So that has been done. That was already done last year. That money was appropriate, special town meeting. So that can come right off the- right. It's been completed. That could be off the five-year plan. Just We'll just make a note, John, on that, that it was completed uh, last year and it was a special town meeting appropriation, I believe, if I remember correctly. So we'll just when we update the the now the building inspectors electronic archiving there's thirty five thousand there uh, uh, no paperwork Jeff John yep uh, that was two the roof was two different line items on the five year plan a year ago right yeah yeah i figured we would talk about that when we get to the five-year plan i did make note of it john no but this thirty-five thousand was on last year for this year right not the police station but right oh, well so right maybe it's ahead. intended to be for the town hall roof for right. the for it so we did the police station section and perhaps this is for town hall maybe you want to move i'm not sure that's, that's maybe a kevin right. question well that's why i asked the, okay. i asked before if it was 
in reference to the police station or the town hall? I'm, I'm, un, I'm unaware of the town hall roof um, initiative, so I, I, don't I know can't answer that question. Either. I think it was for the police station, John. No, I think there was discussion about the uh, flat section of the roof on this building. It needs to be, something needs to be done. Right, that there was the potential for, I, 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 I would obviously nothing was Kevin. done to follow I'm up on it, sure. but it, it was in the plan for last year, that's why I saw it and said, you know, it didn't surprise me to see it, but I was going to ask the question whether it was referring to the police department section or, or this section. But we had done some work right. on this building, or at least on that flat section there, I think it was. I can't so, remember. seeing how nobody here has any information on that, do we just kick it into FY22? Yes. I, I, I would. I would. I don't think... Yeah. Yeah. It's going to go don't. away. Right. Let's kick it into FY22 then. Sounds like a plan. I don't know. God, it sounds so stupid, but I don't know. Okay, building inspectors, the archiving on that. 35,000. Again, we didn't we have not seen any paperwork on that request. I, I do not believe they're ready for it. So do My we understanding kick is, that into FY22 yeah. also? Yep. It might actually be 23, but we'll see. All right. We'll kick that into 22. The, uh, just go back, the file server has been completed. There could be additional stuff coming down the line, but we don't know. So that 20,000 we should just remove for now? Oh, yeah. All right. But I would put it in for 22. Yeah, no, I... Because it expires. Right. Whatever we're doing right. expires. No, we are so going to need to upgrade the virtual server. Put that in for FY22 also? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, okay. We'll need to upgrade the virtual server. So the first way. three items will be going into FY22, seeing how they're isn't any paperwork on those all right so we get to public works and we have the wastewater treatment plant upgrades and we have a dollar amount there but uh, at the annual town meeting it was appropriated to uh, amend and appropriate 19 million which they did so as far as the five-year plan, do we need to just make note of that, the that it was voted appropriate $19 million But uh, yes. And but, not carry anything through for those next five years? Well, I was going to say, we have, we have the payments right. um, for every year. Correct. But I think it's really going to be 11-something. Right. I think what... Well, what Barb had discussed is that what should be reflected in the budget, obviously, is the debt service. We don't know what the debt service for 21 is going to be because we're in the early stage of the project. So there have only has been a very minimal amount of Right. Of, uh, but that leaves work. this committee in a bind where what number then do you plug right. in? Yeah. Well, I think. And, well, there's not any more requests. It, right. The requests right. have been recommended. And right. It's not but I think we should. Nineteen million. Yeah, right. but I, yep. I mean, that's what was approved, but when, when do we incur the debt and when does the debt service kick in? I think needs should be reflected in the plan somehow. Right. And, and we're actually right. not doing the $19 right. million. But the thing is, we don't have that information. No, I realize that. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> but we can right. get that. I, no, I, 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 can talk I hear to what you're saying. So how are you going to break down that $19 million on an annual basis? Have we spent anything this year on the uh, waste We spent plan? for yes. the clarifier. Yes, yeah. some money has been spent. Right. So, fire was 50, yeah. under 70. Right. So what if we just take it all and bump it all over, you know, just put it like the 955 in for next year and then have the next four years after that be these other four numbers for the five-year plan purposes just to keep something on the books. Right, to keep something in there. Yeah. I would uh, think the odds are good we're going to spend some money <coughs> next year. Right. Oh, yeah, the odds are I, very I good. I think what we'll do is we'll... Diana, can you contact David Prickett mm -hmm. and have him get a breakdown of what each year is? Because we we were looking at this, 
at what each year is going to accomplish. Right. We should put down what it is going to accomplish. Right. That would be a huge right. help, obviously, <coughs> to get those numbers. Yeah. And it would lend a little more credibility to the five-year plan. So mm -hmm. if we could do that as quickly as possible, because once again, And then that will reflect the true thing, because it's only going to be right. around 11. Right, yeah. It's not the 19, even right. though it was voted but what, 19. Even though it was appropriate for 19, I think we need to reflect that in the plan that it was appropriated, 19 was appropriated. But as far as an annual expense, you're right, we, we, need, we probably should show something each year. Right. But we need those numbers maybe from David, and the sooner the better so we can plug those into the five-year plan. Well, Barbara should have those numbers fairly soon because we have to have our paperwork organized. Right. So, okay. And that's something that, Diana, you'll be able to pursue? Okay. Thank you. All right. Then we move on to the culvert replacement project. And obviously, at special town meeting last night, it was voted to appropriate $196,895. So we'll have to reflect that. And that's for uh, FY20, correct? Right. 21? Yeah, 21. Current year or next year? Well, right. this all has to, no, this has to be done by June 20th. Right. I mean, June So it would be FY20. It's left FY20. Right. So we're going to have to reflect that into an FY20. I mean. Um, I, I know that backsteps us, but we're going to have to show it on the we, five-year we, plan. We actually technically could do 21, but money's going to be. Because we're going to have an extension probably for the month of July. Right. But I hope it doesn't go beyond that. Right. And we're supposed to spend it by June 30th. Right. So you should show it in FY20. Yes. Just yes. in yes. case anybody asks. Yes. Yes, I would. So we should show that in FY20. And now for FY21, are we showing $100,000? Is this going to be an ongoing project? We're probably showing $100,000 for... Well, um, I know I'm going to be spending... Um, we have a technical assistance grant to do the culvert inventory for the rest of the town. We're applying for a grant that will cost between five and seventy-five hundred, five thousand to seventy-five hundred, mm -hmm. to apply for an assessment. The assessment engineering assessment of, of our crossings, river crossings and culverts, should be around 20, and I'm hoping to get that as a grant. And um, so obviously, if there's some really bad culverts, we're going to be putting in right. um, for the MVP program the next round. Mm -hmm. uh, but we might not be fast enough, so, but I would say leave it in there. Um, it's probably so not going to be my, accurate. My question would be: My question would be, would it? It's probably not. Would it accurate. behoove us to put in a hundred thousand dollars per year for the five-year yes. plan, starting yes. with FY twenty-one? That way, money is there. And some money, yes. Right. At least there's some money there. Perfect. If needed, fine. If not, okay. We'll bump it up. Perfect. We have, a we have a request for that. I don't think we voted it. No, we haven't. We're going to vote all that. We're going to but, vote. But I mean, uh, there, there is a right. formal request. Right. Yeah. Hundred thousand. Yeah. And, and that's and, why I thought we were we're just kind of going through to get this somewhat updated. The plan is, as we discussed, we're hoping to be able to get through this tonight and then be able to vote all the FY twenty one items next week. Okay. I, I will, Tuesday. as we go along this summer, I will update you what information we have. Right. We have right. 119 culverts and crossings right now already documented. None of them are, well, there's one on Lower Road that could possibly be replaced um, within the next year, but that would be for under less than, we would do it ourselves, and it would probably be, I mean, the highway department. And it would probably be in the range of twenty or thirty thousand dollars. So there's enough money here to do it. Yeah. Okay. But um, 
I, 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 you know, if something turns up like Kelleher Drive again, mm -hmm. I, we'll have to come back. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's understandable. And, and language is is uh, there is language in there for for that. Yep. Okay. So culverts, we know what we're going to do there. Uh, the mower request. And that's the ever source, the $26,000. We need to show that for FY21. And we also make sure that it's in FY22 also. There's two years yeah, uh, left. So, and that's, that's, uh, that's more seven. or less a wash because we have to front the 26,000, but ever source reimburses us the 26,000. And that's for the roadside mower. Program, right? It's yeah, down there. for the program. They're stopping the program, by the way. So that we were the last yeah. town to participate. Okay. And the X mark mower is. What's the X mark mower? I think that's. I think that's what they mean. As far no, as it's the down to more. Oh, oh, I, I didn't see below. that. Is the X mark mower the? Um, uh, Does this mean no, a replacement of the O six? In any case, we don't have a request. For we that. don't have a request for that. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. Uh -huh. I'm not even sure where that came from. Let me see. If it's it's, okay. it's off the five-year plan. So. Five-year plan. Yeah, it's on the five-year plan. So, yeah, I didn't see anything from Kevin. So I would say let's the kick that to the FY22. Yep. I haven't heard about it, it. Just take it out for now. Let him submit next year if he wants it. I'd say to, my, the take needs it have changed apparently. Take it out. Yeah. Take yeah. it out. All right. Eliminate it. And if need be, you can come back with that. Yeah, that came off the five year plan. Okay, and then we have a request now for the F1 pickup truck. Ford pickup truck. And there was some cute confusion on the pickup truck and the trade in and the replacement and a couple different requests. Uh, Kevin did just drop off. The committee had asked for a little more clarification. Clarification seems to have created more questions. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we just we just received this so like maybe half hour ago or so. Thirty-two for eighty-eight fifty. So he's looking for thirty-two thousand five hundred. Yes, basically thirty-two five as the is the total that he had dropped off. Uh, but it was, it was my understanding, at least, that the truck was supposed to be a basic straight cab F-150, like the most basic one they make. That's and now, now it's a extended cab, and there's, there's a notation of $4,000 worth of options. We don't know what they are. No, we don't know what they are. Well, radios, strobes, lights. Uh, that's another $3,000. The, the uh, radio, it? by the way, is a two-way radio, just so people know it's not, it's not just a radio. It's not a, like for, an AM for, for, right. <laughs> no, Not an AM Well, that's included both. Right. Yeah, that's probably included, but that 3,000 is a two-way radio for, for them. But that, that's not. So do you want to just table this and have Kevin come in at the beginning of the next meeting? Have him just send you a note. Pardon? Why doesn't he just send you a note what the options are before the next meeting? He doesn't I'd need like to, to come in. I, I got a problem. He doesn't have an extended cab now, so all of a sudden, why does he need one? If mm -hmm. it's replacing okay. an existing truck. It's, it seems like he's asking to spend 35000 and then he's going he's gonna to get whatever he can, he can get for 35000 
it's it's like he it's like it's not a specific truck it's a, it's an it's an amount and so I don't fully understand how the well he went to great lengths at our last meeting to say that he's not getting an F-250, he's, you know, right, but an F kicking cans down the road and he's going to get an F-150 instead. So. Right, an F-150, but an F-150 straight cab strip truck, not an extended cab. I know I, when I spoke with him, he, he mentioned the reason for the extended cab was he wanted to store his stuff in in the cab and not in the back of the pickup is in why well, say that was a very brief discussion because he just got this in and I just I haven't made a complete copy of so is this is this back. truck like a demonstrator for him is it like a like a a truck that he will drive like on a daily basis that he has to store his stuff in it or, or is it well that's uh, that's that's how it's explained it's supposedly uh, truck used by the superintendent to check road conditions and projects and work crews attending meetings and so on. What I know there's he, a lot of confusion here. What's he do now? I mean, I will, I if, will, if, if, if he's, he's got to be taking the stuff with him now and it's in the bed, so why can't he continue to do that? Right. I and don't, save a few bucks. Right. No, I, I, I understand what everybody's saying. Uh, and I can't answer for Kevin. Yeah, so, no, right. rhetorical. I mean, and I mean, yeah, I, no, I, no, I understand. I can only, I know there's, I can only speak from you know watching, a, you know the the maintenance team up at up at the school, and the stuff that gets jammed behind a the seats, a, a seat, isn't necessarily personal or anything else, but it's all stuff that gets used over the course of the year. And that back of that seat is pretty well stuffed, and to have a little bit more space in back of it for the cost might might be worth it. But again, you can have Kevin come in and explain it. But, it, but uh, it, Ken, it's not the only truck they have. I understand it's not they the get, only truck. They got a whole yard full of trucks. <laughs> so. I think I think part of the problem what happened was when the original request came in, it was to. Uh, get a new truck to replace the existing one that that they're driving now. And on that, they had mentioned that it had 80,000 miles rusting. They were having transmission problems, rear end problems with it. And it sounded like the thing was on its last legs, even though it was 10 years old. And then as he presented, we found out that he didn't want to trade that truck. He wanted to trade a different truck, uh, 2009, instead of the 2010. So, so the truck was so bad it had to be replaced, except, oh, oh no, it's not really that bad. We can, we can keep it and we can keep using it. So I think that kind of raised a little bit of a red flag with the committee. Sure, that's fine. And so... Uh, so then asked for clarification, he came back, filled out another form, and it was to trade the truck and trade in the 2009 instead of the 2010, and felt that they could hang on to the 2010 and run that until the next round of pickup replacement. I guess some of the question, I, I'm trying to be very careful here because I'm trying to be non-judgmental but it does raise a little bit of a red flag and it's a, it comes down to, I know the highway department has a plan for replacement of equipment and they are on a time schedule that replacement of equipment, but does it come down to because you're on that plan, you automatically replace the vehicle whether it's really needed or not? So does it come point. down to, is it a need? Is it a want? And it puts, obviously, committees in a tough situation because we're not here to micromanage or totally second guess. But when you have something like this come up, it does raise a little bit of a red flag and it makes you question it. So uh, well, I think yeah. this. I, I think this. I got a question on the price, too. 
the well, standard price you know, is, I'm looking at the radio, it's got six speakers. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, it's the standard price, could he get a, a lesser of a standard price if he gets a radio with two speakers? Or, or no radio. That, that all no depends radio. on the state no, bids. No problem with radio. John, that all depends on the state bids and what's available. No, you need bids. a radio because in an I emergency agree, you, you have radio. to be. No, AM/FM radio. Well, yeah, I AM, think I, radio. I think the way um, this is going is I think myself personally I think we need to have Kevin come in. Yeah. But could I make a suggestion? Meeting. Just because I mentioned I mentioned that there's too much for this meeting. I thought he should be here. But we thought, well, the writing would take care of it. Yeah, and right. It, it Jeff, didn't, did. so. um, could I make a suggestion? You've got a, sure. he's, we've got a Ford pickup line with a thirty-five thousand dollar request. Let's change it for now for, for the discussion heading into next week to thirty-two-five on that line, and then eliminate the two thousand ten F F one fifty pickup at forty thousand on the next line down. But that's the same truck. I know it's the same truck. I'm just saying. In terms yeah, of this discussion we're having now, change it to 32.5 and you can have the discussion next week. We're not voting on anything tonight. Right, so we're not voting. Change on it from 35 to 32.5 and then you can ask make, the questions on. Make, make note of the 32.5. Yeah. Yes. But, or, or we don't do have to change anything on. at the moment, but just make note of the 32.5. Or, or do we have to, or are we in a position now where we have to specify what the truck is that we're approving? Because this is a, a moving target and, and we're going to specify that, that we're recommending up to 32,000 for, and this is my, this seems to be where I'm coming to, and, and the truck we're recommending is the most basic F-150 regular cab that's available. I think, I think probably because there's a lot of questions and there's because a lot of good questions. Because that truck might not even be 32,000. Right. There's, there's a lot of questions, there's a lot of good questions and I really think that we need to have Kevin in to, uh, so people can ask their questions. And, sure. And Go for it. we'll figure out what we need to do for a truck. Are people in agreement with that or no? Or? Sure. Yeah, okay. I think it's it's not fair for us to discuss it right. without yeah, information. Yes, right. it's all speculation. In that way, that way, we can get some more specific mm -hmm. responses because we are we're speculating and and, and yeah, but also we've had, I don't dis I don't agree because we've had multiple meetings about this. Already. Yes, but and we have multiple. But requests. we keep telling Kevin that he doesn't need to come. Just put the paperwork in, and the paperwork is not clear, and also. To truthfully, it's just no different than the ambulance at the skims. You have you have a lemon of a vehicle or a vehicle that's going to have to take lots of repairs. It doesn't make sense from an operational point of view to have a high expense repairs when we're going to replace a vehicle anyway. Well, I'm not saying not to. I'm actually in favor of buying the truck. I'm just questioning the the cost of it and and what it is because this this. But this that's why we should have is Kevin. different from the, the request that was originally made. Yeah, just that's why we have him to come in because it's oh. more confusing. It hasn't clarified it at all. Diana, could you arrange for Kevin to come in on, we have a meeting February 4th at 5 o'clock. And if he could be here for 5 o'clock, hopefully we'll have, we'll be able to get a little more specific as far as answers and uh, still be able to vote all items for that for that evening. Thank you. Okay, uh, the roadside mower, that's the one that I was talking about right. before. I don't think there's any questions on that. Pretty straightforward. Now the mini excavator uh, I, I didn't know which amount to put in the spreadsheet, so I put in a question mark. All right. Whether we want 144 well, or 68. Well, and now again, we're being asked to decide which one we're going to recommend. Or if you're going to recommend. Or if we're going to recommend at all. <laughs> right. And, 
And the the I, the the amount that's on the five year plan is sixty six thousand, not one hundred fourteen thousand. Right. Kevin, no. Kevin. Uh, also, I, I spoke with him, and uh, that's yeah. When I spoke with him, he was. Pardon. No, go ahead. Sorry. When I spoke with him, he was trying to get because I said, Kevin, you know, you've got two many excavators. We're trying to figure out what's the best way to go here, how much use. He was going to try to get uh, some information back. Uh, Ken, you had asked about hours. And right. He hasn't been able to do that. And he was also trying to work on, well, if we leased it, if, he, if we did a lease as far as costs over a five-year period or whatever the case may be, uh, his explanation was, well, maybe we could do a lease if we tried it for a couple of years and it didn't work out, you give it back. Well, you know, obviously there's questions about that too. So I think, once again, there's, uh, we're, in a, we're in a situation here where this is something that we will need to discuss. Last year the request was 66000 Right. Now he's sending this year. Now he's got two requests: sixty-six and one forty-three. Right. So, I, what I would do? Well, can't, can't we decide though that that we? Do we, we need to? Do we need to take a vote to decide which one we're going to consider? This is <laughs> this is what I was going to do. What I was going to suggest is we discuss the merits of the two. We leave both of them there. Come next week when we vote the items. We vote on both both uh, items, as far as the more expensive one, the hundred and some odd thousand dollar. If you vote for it, great. If you vote it down, you know you vote the sixty some odd thousand. If it votes for it, fine. If it's voted down, then you go back and you work it out from there. Yeah, we could have a we could have a vote to. Decide which one we're going to vote, we were gonna we're gonna vote, vote on. on. Right, that we were going to recommend. I know it's, I, it's you know short of without knowing the number of hours we honestly think we're going to use the thing. I, I have a hard time wrapping my arms around this because I could see us just you know letting Kevin somehow get the funds authorized to lease and not lease but rent and use one for the course of a year to find out just how much he truly does need it. There you go. Yeah. And then the following year you can say, yes, this is the right. type we need, this is what we want. You know, it, I mean, it's either one's going to be a valuable piece of equipment right. in terms of what the, you know, what the department can now do. But I, without a proven track record, I just, it's getting increasingly we, difficult for me to make, well, make any well, kind of decision. Can I just decision. give you a little background? Um, the 1985 Food Security Act that was passed um, stopped the conversion of wetlands into cropland. So the town has not been able to maintain its ditch systems since 1985. However, <clears throat> there is, I've been working on it with the state. There is now a new protocol just two weeks ago um, that has finally been approved to, um, if you can prove that you had maintained farmland prior to 1985, there is a protocol now to um, change it to farmland of uh, state importance. And that allows you to not have to rebuild the wetlands and you can go into the wetlands. Number two, there are four other communities in the state um, and I just got a quote for $7,000 to have our engineers work with Kevin to put a bundled notice of intent. That's another way to clean out our ditches. So we're going to be doing that. Uh, the Mosquito District has been up and running now for three years. We just hired a, a supervisor. So we are going to be able to do, um, in consulting with the Mosquito District, cleaning out of our ditches. So there's three things that I've been working on for multiple years that are finally coming together. And that's why Kevin was feeling the need for these mini excavators. However, we don't know how fast we're going to be able to move. We're not sure exactly what we're going to do, but we know we're going to replace Kelleher Drive culvert 
in, by June of 2020, and I'll, we're going to be working along Bloody Brook for sure. So that's whether we rent or use our own equipment or right. we're going to be doing something. Right. Well, the Kelleher we Drive have, culvert, that's not, it's not something that the town's going to take The on. actual replacement is being, yes, is contracted out. Right. But we are going to do a, a work along Bloody Brook right. no, I, I in conjunction with that right. placement. To go back to what Ken said, though, and, and I suggested this, that's why I called and got prices for renting in that. I, I lean towards what Ken had just stated as far as in adding to what you had just mentioned, Carolyn. We really don't know how much we're going to use it, how many hours I, we're going I to agree. need it for. So my, my thinking is that it may be wise for the town of Deerfield to rent for a year or two to build a track record to see how many hours we're actually needing and, and that what, way we can do analysis what of right. whether it's right. better off to purchase or better off to continue, continue to renting. rent. And right. Then we can look at the actual bills. Right. That's, the actual, that's the actual, well I, I would say it's just part of it is just I'm not sure how fast we're going to get going on this and I'm not sure uh, you know, I mean, it, to me, it makes sense to rent until you decide what kind, how do you plan to do this to accomplish this task? Right. right. And uh, do I imagine that we're going to be doing it all over town? Yes. But do I think it could be two or three years before we really get everything mm -hmm. done? I don't know. But there is definitely a need for this. It's just that I'm not sure what the need is, and I'm not sure how fast and the we're going to do the other, The other problem that so I think this is a good compromise. Yeah, I think it's a good compromise. And the, the other problem that came out was that he, Kevin said that he didn't really have enough personnel to run all this equipment. And you have to have a, you know, a good equipment operator yeah, to be able to. to he need, really well, we have to train people. And I mean, that's why I've been well, you have. having classes here for you know, culvert replacements. And mm -hmm. I mean, we're really trying to get I just, organized. I just think that it, it give us an opportunity, as Jack pointed out, to collect more information and make a, a more informed decision. Yes. Uh, I, think that's, I think that's a good I'm okay with right. that. I want to just interrupt very quickly now because this is going to uh, impact a couple of things that we've talked or we have on the list to talk about. But Julie, are you ready? <laughs> we asked Julie to come in and right. do a uh, uh, a quick overview for us Senior as Senate far Council. as the building assessments and she chairs the committee I believe right yes so and Julie if you'd like to introduce yourself just for everybody so they know who you are okay I'm Julie Chalfant I'm chair of the town building advisory committee and um, Julie can you spell your last name please? sure Chalfant C-H-A-L-F-A-N-T thank you um, so the Town Building Advisory Committee to date has had two big items that we've been working on. One is to get a survey um, done of the town buildings by an architectural engineering firm to give us a report of the current status of the buildings and recommended upgrades required to bring or keep the building at code for the purpose for which the building is being used. Um, and from that, our, the, the output is supposed to be a report for each of these buildings, um, time phased with dollar values for the upgrades that are required. Um, the buildings that we asked to be surveyed are this building, the senior center building, the um, congregational church building, and the town garage. Um, from that information, I guess parallel to that, we did a survey of town residents asking for just kind of opinions on space and space needs. What do you need space for? What do you use the spaces for? What is your opinion of the quality of the spaces? Are you um, tied to the buildings that exist or would you be happy to build new buildings? Those types of questions. That survey is 
done, we have a preliminary tabulated set of results from that survey that as a committee we are parsing through and there will be a presentation of those results um, later on this spring to anybody in the town who wants to come. Um, from these two pieces of data, the goal is to be able to make recommendations to the town about what should be done with the building. So we have a dollar value and we have opinions and we can start to form a plan for what should be done with these buildings. The nice aside of this for you all is that we get this report with dollar values on it, which um, will be turned over to you so that you can use in planning for um, capital improvements to the buildings should they be done. Um, we hired a, an architectural firm, GRLA. Um, the kickoff meeting for that will be February 7th. Um, they have 135 days from the notice to proceed um, by the contract. The notice to proceed was December 23rd, so we'll get the report back. 135 days from that is like mid April sometimes, so that's not going to help you any for this year's budget. But right. hopefully, we'll have this great report for next year's budget that um, y'all can use. Very good. I think can that's it. Any questions? Anybody, any questions? No, but thank you for your work. I was going to say yeah, that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julie. Yeah. So, mid April is what we can look for as far as response. From I them think so, right. And as it. part of that, there will be a presentation by the architectural firm very good. with the results. And we hope to have the, um, uh, the guy who's the, the professor who's running the survey for us also do a presentation at the same time so that you can get both pieces of data at the same time. Great. Right. Good. Thanks. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, not, we, we have a few more minutes, but before we go any further here, because I'm looking at what we still have left, some of that's fairly cut and dry, but I'm thinking we should set another date right now for our next meeting for, we have the, we have we have the 4th, Tuesday the 4th, already set for 5 o'clock, CIPC meeting. But I think we need to set another date because I don't know if we're going to be able to get through this. The intention was to be able to vote these uh, Tuesday night, but I don't know if we're going to have time to get everything done and vote them also. There seems to be uh, some unanswered the, questions here. When's the deadline for... This, this is supposed to be mid-February? Mid-February is what your bylaws say. I was opposed to that because of this, but I got voted down, so. So we're under the gun now. Um, do, do we you want, want to, try to try to double up next week, or do we want to? How about the 12th? Can you all make it to 12th? I think we could do a final vote on the 12th. That's still mid-February. I know Ken's not going to be here. I, I'm, I won't be here next week either. My pl right, travel yeah, plans have changed, yeah, so gonna, I, I won't be back until March. Right, we're going to skip down, and uh, right. we'll talk to you about the generator here yep. next. That's why I want That's wanna. no problem. Do people want to double up next week, do like Thursday at 6, or you prefer to go to Wednesday the 12th? That doesn't give us a lot of time as far as once we vote these to put a five-year plan together and then meet and review that. Just curious, what happens if we miss the deadline? I don't know, we'll have to talk to Diana. She's the one that kind of encouraged the deadline here. 10, ten demerits. There's, I think it basically says you're supposed to deliver the recommendations to the, I can't remember if it says Select Board of Finance Committee, by like 30 days before the warrant closes. So it's not a tight and fast deadline. It's just a, you know, it's a, generally it's supposed to be the end of February, early March, so that before. they can have a month before the warrant closes to, you know, put that Right, well, I know we need to do a public hearing, so, with the five-year plan. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should schedule the, five, the public hearing um, the 26th of February. That's, that gives the whole month of March. So that gives us. Uh, that, that gives you us. Mean the whole month of February. 
You mean the oh, whole month? No, of I March. know what you say. I'm sorry. Take that. Gives back. us the yep. whole month of March for the finance and the select board and whatever to review. Right. That gives us the 30 days, and then um, we could try to squeeze in at least one more meeting. It's up to you all, but. Do you I mean, have on the twelfth? Do you have a, a committee meeting, select board? I have a select board. What time is that? Six. 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 So we see could that do. puts us again. That puts us with an hour time limit. I'd like to. I'd like to avoid these hour time limits. Well, yeah, I agree. It's, it, because it's getting to the point where. Well, do you want to do the fifth then? There's well, not. Well, we already nothing. have scheduled the fourth. When we do the 12th, then there's no time limit, right? And just no time limit. The 12th would be. They have a select board's meeting at 6. But it, I would just not, I mean, I can come back and vote. Uh, the only trouble is Ken's not going to be here. And then if, if you'd have Skip and Skip uh, Rachel. I'm hoping that Skip will be here in... Uh, Rachel, Rachel, I know she couldn't make it tonight. I just got that okay. email this afternoon. She was planning on being here, so I just want to make sure we have a quorum. That's all. I'm pretty sure she was available next week on the fourth. Right, Rachel, yeah, she... and skips back on the. Do 4th we do the twelfth? That's my vote. Are we, what are we doing on the twelfth? In other words, we're pushing back the, the our voting until. The yeah, I think yeah. we're going to have to. I think we're going to have to kick back the vote till the twelfth. We just don't have enough time to get through everything. I didn't think we would, but we were hoping to be able to vote the fourth, but it looks like we're not going to be so able to So if we do meet that. the 12th, that still gives us the week of the 17th it, to make it for the, the public hearing on the 26th. The 26th of February public hearing? Yep. At, at that's that, that's going to push that pretty hard as far as finishing the five-year plan. How much notice do we need for the public hearing? 48 hours. Could we do the public hearing in March sometime? And still yeah. we feel we'll do March. I don't think the, the warrant doesn't close until the first week of April, right? Right. And it says that the selectmen, it's basically the Board of Selectmen show, can, the Board of Selectmen and the committee conduct the hearing. So right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, the select yep. board and the committee. And then after that, that's when it's basically right. submitted. And we still have to, remember, we still have to present this to the finance committee too so. I, I mean I, I'm okay with not I was just trying to back into our schedule all right let's let's plan on CIPC for the 12th and that's going to be the, time, the date we vote and we'll determine that we'll determine right tentatively that'll be the day we vote we'll determine that on the fourth here so February 12th, right? Yep. Yep, February 12th at 5 o'clock. And February 4th at 5 o'clock. Right. Tentatively, the 26th at 5 o'clock, at 6 o'clock. But. On um, which one? The 26th at 6 o'clock. I would like to avoid that Ash Wednesday. And oh, okay. No, stuff. that's fine. We'll, if, we'll come up with another date after uh, either next Tuesday or the 12th. We'll figure that out. Okay, because then the next uh, select board meeting after that is um, March 11th. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll get that done before then. Okay. Yeah, and I right, have the we'll school committee on March 11th, so. Right. Okay. Jack, Trevor's you'll be able to, to take care of agendas Trevor's and posting. Have to morph. All right. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. okay. Hmm. All right, very quickly, because Ken's not going to be here. Let's have a quick discussion. Skip, all right, we run like five minutes over here. Or so quick discussion on the uh, generator for the elementary school. And so as um, I, I sent an email that I had gotten from Bill Hildreth from um, the schools. The $68,000 price is for a 100 kW generator installed with a, a modification to the transfer switch that is in, presently in place, which is a manual transfer as opposed to an automatic transfer. How much that adds to the cost of installing a generator, I don't know. Um, right. And then you had gotten a price What's, that yeah, people got a copy of. 
Yeah, this came this from is, Kevin, right? This just came from Kevin, like right. I say, about five minutes before our yep. meeting started. I have I have more paperwork on it. We just did not have time right. to copy everything. So this this makes more sense to me in terms of the cost. Right. Right. Just, um, and a, a, a further question I had asked just just so I could understand because this is a, it's a hundred kW generator that was quoted. The uh, town hall generator. Oh shoot! I just wrote it down somewhere. Can't remember. That was an 80k. As an 80k. Right. As opposed to 100k. Um, but it would have had to have some wiring done because I don't think this building was originally set up with transfer switch capabilities and circuitry. Right. So also, maybe John this, could tell us that. Right. Uh, also, this building uh, is a one phase and the school is a three phase. Three phase. So that's a big difference right. uh, also there. And you're talking a 400 amp service. All right. Um, but, so, but are uh, we, we've had a discussion about what the purpose of this generator is. And, and we kind of circled around the idea that it that it's the purpose of it is to keep the building warm. Correct. And keep the refrigerators running. Correct. And it seems like that's not a hundred to me, that's not a hundred kilowatts. It's a four hundred amp service, three phase power, so I imagine it's um, probably close to a hundred amps. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert. I you know, we right. we're relying on the people that have uh, recommended what needs to be done to power, and it's only the circuits, uh, you know, it's a 200 amp service that you're powering, and it's only the basic building services. It's not the full building. So, so I, I, just to put this in perspective, I, I go to the State Street Fruit Market in Northampton, yep. and they have a 100 kilowatt generator mm -hmm. to run the store, a liquor store, a commercial kitchen, they have three walk-in coolers, they have like a 20-foot bank of freezers, they have um, uh, probably a 40-foot bank of refrigerated display cases. Mm -hmm. And what do we have in the school to keep it warm? We have a boiler. And all the, and the, all the equipment that helps run it. And the refrigerators. So yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You can you can get a walking tour over there. All I know is this is know. what was quoted, and uh, I, I, I don't know what to say, Jack. If it, if it and and again, this was put forward by the school committee purely for the town to discuss whether they want to protect the building or not. It doesn't, right. you know. It, the school is not saying we need it. We're saying it's something that's been around for the 30 years that school has been over there. It's never had a generator. And if you have a prolonged freeze, I mean a prolonged power outage, and it's in freezing weather, you're going to put the building at risk. That's, it, you know, and so I don't have, you know, I, I'm not saying either way, yay or nay. It's just, it's been brought forward. Skip. He did, he gave us, he gave us some information here. Right. A few days ago, uh, Brendan and I talked with him. He did throw out some. I don't know what's here. Do you this, need more than what's the generator that's here? Well, this is an 80 okay. kilowatt. We were just told. Point. Right. Um, yeah. They're, so they're proposing. I have no idea. So, okay. Let me go right. ahead, Brenda. So I, I didn't hear the beginning of the conversation, but yep. do you know that there's already twenty-seven thousand dollars? Correct. That's okay. that's that's, that's what my point I was going to bring up. Okay. I did did a little legwork behind the scenes here, and Ken's absolutely right. Uh, the school is not requesting this as far as a direct school request. They wanted to put it on the table for the town to discuss and let the town as far as select board, us, or whatever, mm -hmm. determine if they felt that a generator was needed in the building to protect the town asset. Right. So uh, they, the school does have an account that they had put away, I think it was like five, six years ago. No, oh, it was a town year. Year. book. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, and roughly 000. they have, what is it, Brendan, 27,000? Yes. That's correct. They are, they have 27,000 in that account that was put away for a generator, they are willing to spend that on that generator. 
And if the town deems that they want to do that generator, uh, they can recommend and appropriate a dollar amount with the stipulation that they only spend the difference of the 27000 in what is needed to get that generator in place and up and running. They mm -hmm. are going to, or they will, uh, revisit that and do that. Uh, let me, I don't want, <laughs> as inexpensive as possible and yet meet the goals of one, just making sure that they have some way to back that up, even if they have to do it manually, plug it in, or uh, so the pipes don't freeze and the freezers stay up and running. So that's what I have learned to this point. So, yeah, so my apologies for not remembering to mention the 20. The whole thing that spurred this was I was approached midsummer with the question of what do you want us to do with the 27,000? Because you had, you know, you had discovered it. <laughs> you asked Darius, Darius asked me, and I said, why don't I take it to the committee? The committee said, let's find out what the town wants to do, and if they don't want to do anything, we just turn the $27,000 back over. And then he asked me. And then he asked you. Last summer as well. Yep. So, so what's the requested amount? What is he asking? Well, the, the number that was gotten on the initial foray into this by Bill Hildreth yep. was $65,000. 68. 60, yeah. I'm sorry, $68,000. And yeah, that's the to. Phase, one of the problems that you run into with is that extensive wiring to transfer it over. You may have to go with a generator that big to get into that three phase. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, to ultimately rewire that whole system is going to cost you twenty dollars to $30,000 just to put in a transfer switch. Correct. To go to only the items you want. Mm -hmm. And it turns into a disaster to do. So yep. it's a matter of either you want to generate the building or you don't, is it worth it? Is it worth it if there's a function in there? Uh, I was at Summerlin Elementary School Saturday with a basketball game and it went pitch dark. Telephone poles hit on 116 at Go 10. Generator came on in less than 10 seconds. All the power came back on in the building. And everybody just thought it was a power surge. Problem, power came, they had no idea they were on generator. So, to protect your assets, is it worth it? Emergency shelter, is it worth it? Is it something we can write into the MVP? I don't know. I, I think it could be written into the MVP because it's resiliency. We're having you know, more frequent ice storms and that kind of thing because the weather patterns are so weird. So um, in years past, we've only lost power downtown a couple times and they haven't been prolonged, but you know, the weather patterns are changing. So, I mean, I think this is our town asset. We should be protecting our town assets. So I'm in support of this, but. So, um, so it just, it, it seems like the 68,000 is, is just. It's high. It's, it's way yeah. high. Yeah, it's, it's because high. Because a 100 kilowatt generator is like 30 to $35,000, and yeah. it can't be another 30,000 to install it. So, yeah, I'm sure they got some high numbers that need to go up. So Kevin's number is more like uh, 52,000. 52,000. Right. Yeah, that's much more accurate. And you already got 27 sitting there. So it's very feasible. Um, rewind the clock for me. 2011, I was stuck in Sturbridge. I was not here. How did you guys make out with the ice storm in South Deerfield? I know my house in Sturbridge. I know Mary's in Sturbridge. We lost powers for nine and a half days. My neighbors were showering at my house because I had a generator. And I had a generator that my father came over and wired through a cellar window. We didn't hear that. With a cord. So literally <laughs> just to so. look it up. I think South so. Deerfield did okay, but Good. Upper Road, we lost power for five right. days. Right. Yeah. We, we were without power for five days. I was out but for five days, but. So one yet. of the other questions is, is the kids are in school there and you do have a power outage. Do you want that school to be fully functional right away when those kids are in there? If a storm blows through, whether it's a microburst or anything else, the last thing we want is, is them traumatized. We literally want the power to go out for three seconds, it to go right back on, a storm blow over, and no post-traumatic stress with them. We don't want any downtime. Yeah. Um, this, this generator that we had been talking about was not the power to you know, bring it up to full service. It was just to hit critical areas of the building. And 
100 kW she pretty much almost do that whole building. What's that? 100 kW she pretty much yeah. do that whole building. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good to hear. Yes. So. But, but you're saying that you, you can't really install a, a smaller generator. Because With three phase, you probably can't, Jack. Because then you have yeah. to. All right. Yeah, well, because you'd, you'd have to rewire that. That whole system's got to be rewired. Yeah. 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 And it turns into a disaster to do. You're talking 10 to 30,000 just to do that alone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And then so it could that, screw that up. Means that's that's probably, you've got to put in a whole separate panels, the whole bit. Right. Just, that's what he's talking. I mean, when I talked with Bill Hildreth, that's what he said. Is yes. Because right now there's a manual transfer switch capability in that building. Yes. But to convert it over to automatic is going to be is going to add cost to the cost of the generator. Yeah, the transfer switches themselves can be anywhere from ten to fourteen thousand oh, dollars. Yeah. The generators are thirty to forty five thousand, mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. on what type of right. deal you get. Ooh, and then the wiring it. to make it compatible. Yeah. Yep. That could be so. expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it depends what you have there for existing wiring. I know here we've had constant power surges, so we actually ran brand new conduit into the building, etc. Yeah. So so, so this the generator for this building was like forty five thousand. It ended up being forty five thousand. Sounds about right. Forty five, forty nine. Right. I can't remember exactly. I never saw the invoices. Yeah, yeah there's several different ones, but yeah, right. I'd have because to Because there's they had to spend additional for some of the wiring, I believe it was. Yeah, we redid all the wiring right. because of those surges. Yeah, right. we lose power for like a half second here or there, you yeah. know, and trip the computers. Yeah. Yep. So we want to eliminate that. We ran brand new wiring in. Right. Yep. That costs some money. So. Our good old building. It's a worthwhile investment. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments for now on that? Nope. Okay. All right. I hate to say this, but I think we need to leave this. Unfortunately, and well, I believe we need to come back to it. Sure. The um, only thing I'd say is you're, you're still carrying in this part particular plan um, the front entry courtyard. We, we bumped that out, I believe, one year, didn't we? Right. Well, uh, as far as the door replacement? No. no down the, the very yard. bottom, the entry courtyard. 46.3. That should be 22. Well, on the last side. That should be 50,000. Yeah. Right. And I think it goes to 2022, not 2021. So it's not 46.3, right. it's 50? That's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be a $50,000 quest. It's going to be $50,000 and it's going to get kicked in. I did make note of that when we got yep. to it. Uh, that's $50,000 and that gets kicked into FY 2022. Right. The door hardware is gone. The door hardware, right. I have that. I the have ceiling that tiles is too. gone and the... Uh, right. Also, on the gym floor uh, renovations, we have to uh, include in FY25 another uh, $16,000. Just to resurface, yeah. Just to resurface, Every yeah. five years. So I, I made note of all that when okay. we got to it. 25 or 24? 25. 25? 25, FY25, yeah. which will 16? show up 16000 we'll, we'll, that We'll get to that next week, next Tuesday. I did have note, made note of all that. I did a cross-reference, so try to be somewhat prepared. Are we still, still doing uh, unfortunately, I think we really need yes. to okay. yeah, question or comment. Two more years. Uh, yeah. Come up and introduce yourself. Yeah, my name's uh, Reed Fred Moore. I'm on the Energy Committee, and we're looking into LED streetlights. And we asked just some preliminary numbers, but we wanted to, I wanted to find out more about the process to get it in the five-year plan. So uh, maybe I could talk to somebody afterwards. Uh, Reed, what did you come up with for, because we were just trying to figure out, we were trying to make contact with who we had talked to last year down at the MMA. So what numbers did you come up with? Well, the only numbers I have right now are the ones that uh, the guy from Real Term presented uh, last September. And so right now we're trying to follow up on that and uh, uh, apply for a grant to do some initial studies. Uh, and so, so I'm I'm just trying to get up to speed as to what what the procedure is to get it. Uh, is it over ten thousand dollars or less than ten thousand? It's over ten thousand. The, the okay. preliminary number was from that one uh, contractor was uh, about one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. So yeah, I think, that's over I 10. Think, I think we're going to do it for um, 22. 
Um, yeah. Not this year, but we'll put it in for request FY for 2022. So mm -hmm. if you could just do a placeholder for 150. Right. For LED that, and then we'll try to firm up, we'll firm up numbers. For LED street lighting. For fiscal yep. year 2022. Right. Um, there, the 30%, our concern was we wanted to get in before the 30% went away. There's a 30% deal. With uh, who? The, the lights. Which it was a, some kind of grant program that gave us 30% plus. So I mean, there was, a, you, you, there was a possibility of two grants, merging two grants. We, we were trying to track that down. Okay, I, I don't have any information on that. No, so. I know. We were, it was pretty vague. So I would just put down the 150, and the hope is that. FY22. Yes, yep. and the hope is that we are going to come up with some grant funding. Right. Okay. Also, uh, so you're aware you don't need to do it this year, but next year in uh, early part of the year, fall, as far as by December 1st, you'll want to uh, secure a capital expenditure request form from the town administrator okay. and complete that with the information. It's just a simple right. two side, one page sheet yeah. and forward that to the capital improvement oh committee. Okay. Just right. so we'll okay. have it in writing. Yeah, no, we okay. obviously we're trying yep. to firm things up so we have mm -hmm. yep. some more specifics and, and a, a plan. So. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank Reed, you. Thank okay. you so much for coming. Thank you. We, we're Appreciate trying to that. sort that out. All right. I, well, we're running over by 15 minutes here. Skip's going to beat me up after the next meeting if we don't clear out. So, motion so to adjourn. A second. So, the meeting. All in favor? Motion no, been uh, made, seconded. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.